Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, part 5 video, which is the last video for this chapter, KSSM Mathematics, from 2, chapter 1, Patterns and Sequences. So in this part of the video, we are going to learn what is a term in a number sequence. So we look at our first example here, we are given this number sequence. As you can see that from 3 to 6, we are, we add 3, to 3 you get 6, 6 plus 3 you get 9, 9 plus 3 you get 12. So this is a number sequence. So whenever you are given a number sequence, the first number here, we refer this as the first term. Then the second number, second term, the third number will be the third term, the fourth term, and if the list continues, if the sequence continues, uh, which is 15, 18 here, this will be your fourth term and your sixth term. So basically the word terms here help us to determine uh, the position of the number in the number sequence. If I say the fourth term, we are referring to the number 12, hence the fourth term is number 12. Let's look at more examples. State the fifth term for the following number sequence. So in this given number sequence, we only have the first, the second, and the third. If you are going to continue from here, we have to find the fourth and then the fifth term. We determine the patterns here. From 2 to 11, we add, we add five, 9. 2 plus 9, you get 11. If 11 plus 9, you get 20. Hence, adding 9 is the pattern here. So we add 9 to 20, you get 29. We add 9 again, you get 38. Hence, the fifth term is equals to 38. Since you already understand the meaning of the term, we try to look at the symbol we use to represent the term. Okay, The symbol that we use is a capital letter T. And you'll see that there's an N here. The N refers to the nth term in a number sequence. So N here is the position of the term. What do I mean? Back to our uh, example number one here. The fifth term can be represented by using the symbol, which is T for terms. So the fifth term is T5, and it is equal to 38. In the next example, we are looking for the seventh term. In other words, we are looking for T7 for the following number sequence. First, we determine the pattern. From 20 to 17, we subtract by 3. From 17 to 14, we subtract by 3. Hence, subtracting 3 is the pattern here. It's confirmed, so we can continue. 14 minus 3, 11. 11 minus 3, you get 8. 8 minus 3, you get 5. 5 minus 3, you get 2. We are looking for the seventh term. So the first term here is T1. Now T1 is 20. The second term is T2. Now we always start from the left to the right. Okay, so this is the second term. Then the third term is 14. The fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, and seventh term. Hence, the answer T7 is equal to 2. Here we have more examples. Again, finding or stating that seventh term means finding T7 for the following number sequence. And again, we first have to determine the pattern. Okay, If you have problem understanding with a fraction, you can change this to decimals 5.5. Hence, from 3 to 5.5 is actually adding 2.5. Yeah, 3 plus 2.5, you get 5.5. Or, if you are using fraction, it will be 2, 1 over 2. 3 plus 2, 1 over 2 is 5, 1 over 2. So, in this example, I think I'll be, I just use decimals. Yeah? And then, 5.5 or 5, 1 over 2, if we add 2.5, you will get 8. Hence, adding 2.5 is the pattern. If you continue, 8 plus 2.5, you get 10.5. When we add another 2.5, we get 18. So here, 3 is the first term. Huh? T1 is 3. T2 is 5, 1 over 2. T3 is the third term, which is 8. So our answer, we are looking for T7. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7. Hence, T7 is 18. For this example, you are given a number sequence. We, are, we need to determine which term in this sequence is 32. 
Meaning that if we extend the sequence, if we extend it uh, for, by writing all these numbers, 32 is one of the numbers. And we want to determine the position. Where is the number 32? Hence, we start off by determining the pattern. So 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. Hence, adding 4 is the pattern. 20 plus 4 is 24. 24 plus 4, you get 28. 28 plus 4, you get 32, which is this number. Hence, we just stop here. Then we count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Meaning that 32 is the sixth term. Okay, so you can write T6 equals to 32. Or you can write 32 is the sixth term. For this example, given the number sequence is 2, 6, and 18, determine which term in the number sequence is 4, 8, 6. So again, when the number sequence continues here, one of this term will be 4, 8, 6. Uh, will be 4, 8, 6. Hence, we need to determine and identify which term is it. So we need to complete or extend the sequence. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 4, is it 18? No. Hence, adding 4 is not a pattern. So we try multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 3, you get 54. 54 times 3, 162 and 162 times 3 you get 486 which is the number that we are looking for so we stop here and then we count 1 2 3 4 5 6 so means that 486 is the sixth term now we move on to the last part of this chapter which is solving problems involving sequence look at the example number one Ali decides to feed his fishes four times a day. Yeah, in one day, he wants to feed, feed the fish for four times. Starting at 7.30 a.m. Every day. At what time should he feed the fish during the third feeding? So since he's going to feed the fish for four times, and the first time start at 7.30, when will be the third time, the third feeding? So assuming that the interval, the time interval between all four times in the day is constant. Then, for a day, we know that in a day we have 24 hours. We can divide this, huh? because the time interval is the same, we divide this equally to four, and you'll get six hours. So this means that every six hours, Ali will feed the fish once. If he starts at 7.30, 7.30 a.m., if we add 6 hours, it will be 13, you know, 7 plus 6, you get 13. So 13.30 is actually 1.30 p.m. And if we add another 6 hours, it will be 7.30 p.m. So actually the time here acts as a sequence where your first term is 7.30, which is the first time you feed the fish. This is the second time and this is the third time which is the third feeding, hence the answer is 7.30 p.m. For the second example of problem solving question, this table shows the timetable for seven buses, uh, different bus, seven different buses, A to F, which travels from city A to city B. So the departure time is given as this. Departure time here means the time that the bus starts moving from city A to city B. So bus A will start to move at 7.15, bus B will move at 7.30 and so on. And you can see that the time here actually is a per sequence where you see the difference, the time interval. From here to here is 15 minutes, from here to here is another 15 minutes. So, so we always add 15 minutes to the previous time to get the next departure time at 15. We get the next departure time. Now back to our question. Answer the following. Sir. Calculate the interval between departure time of two consecutive buses. Two consecutive buses means it's either A, B, or B, C, or C, D, and so on. Oh, no, that must be consecutive. And the time interval, to find the time interval, we just take 
one of this, we minus the other one. We want to find what is the difference, the time difference uh, between these two departure time. So I think it's quite obvious. We already discussed this. It is 15 minutes. Next one. What time does bus F leave? So assuming that this is a sequence from A to F, so we can find the next departure time here by just adding 15 minutes to C, you get 8 a.m. If we add another 15 minutes, you get 8.15 8, a.m. Add another 15 minutes, you get 8.30 a.m. Hence, this is the answer to question B. For our last example here, you see, you can see that we have uh, three designs. Okay, so CT create a design using these circles. State the pattern for the number of circles. Okay, so the pattern that we want is referring to the number of circles. Huh? So you can you can see the first design here. We have four circles. The next design we have eight circles. For the next one we have twelve circles. So from four to eight, we add four. And we need to confirm, we need to double check whether this is correct or not. From 8 to 4, uh, 8 to 12, you add another 4. Hence, adding 4 is the pattern. Hence, the pattern is add 4 to the previous numbers of circles. Determine the sequence for the circles in the term of the number of circles here. So we just take the 4, 8, and 12. We just write it down 4, 8, 12. The next question draw the fourth term. Draw the fourth term, so you need to draw. So even though we know that uh, for the next one, we need to have 12 plus 4, which is 16 circles, we need to follow the orientation of the design here. You can see that we are adding 4, adding 4. So the drawing will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is this, right? And you add another 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the drawing. And lastly, calculate the value of T6 means the sixth term. So we have to extend our sequence here from 4 to 8, 8 to 12. Adding, adding 4, we get 16. 16 plus 4, you get 20. 20 plus 4, you get 24. So this is the first term, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. Hence, T6 equals to 24. And this is the end of this video, which is also the last video for this chapter one. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, everyone.